marketing, self-examining, thought-provoking, based on the prophetic book of the Bible, the message of mankind is complex and controversial, divine election, divine providence, blessing and cursing, divorce, tithing, the day of the Lord and much more. The, the message, message of the Magi. Join the Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint this and every Wednesday night at 7.30 for the Bible study series entitled The, the Message of the Magi on our YouTube page at Edgewater Baptist Church. Welcome to the online Bible study series of the Edgewater Waterford Circuit of Baptist Churches in St. Catherine, Jamaica. And a special welcome to those who are viewing from overseas. May the Lord add his blessings to his word. But before we go any further, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this moment in time where we can come to study and to explore your word. We thank you, God, for having brought us thus far and given us the full assurance that you who have begun a good work in us will continue unto the day of our Lord. So bless our time, bless this moment, Bless this study. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you who have been journeying with us over the past couple of months and weeks and days, you will know that we are actually winding down our series entitled The Message of Malachi. And in so doing, last week, we looked on part 18 of our series. Yes, part 18 coming to us from Malachi chapter 4, verse 1 through to verse 3. And in so doing, we noted that one of the most prevalent themes throughout many of the old prophetic books, the Old Testament prophetic books, is the concept of the day of the Lord. And we noted last time that in this, the final chapter of Malachi, the focus is definitely on that theme, the day of the Lord. We noted that this is confirmed and affirmed by the fact that the phrase day of the Lord or the day is actually mentioned or are actually mentioned at least four times in just six verses of Malachi chapter four. And so we asked the question last week, what really is the day of the Lord? And we said it may be defined as a special day or a period of time when God's will and purpose for mankind will ultimately be fulfilled. And indeed, from this final chapter of Malachi, the following we said are evident in identifying the day of the Lord, in particular, verse 1 through to verse 3. And so we noted that it was regarded as a futuristic event. In verse 1 it says, For behold, the day is coming. We also noted that it was regarded as a dualistic event. In verse 5 it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The dualism, the dualistic nature of the day is emphasized in those verses. 
because we see opposite sides of the fence. On one side, as our first major point, we said it will be an awful experience. Indeed, in verse 1, uses metaphors like burning like an oven and stubble, similar to what we found in 2 Peter 3, verse 10 through to verse 12, which speaks of the day of the Lord as a thief in the night it will come. The heavens will pass away with great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Same type of metaphor being used. But we also noted that the experience will be awful, especially for those guilty of haughtiness and wickedness, the proud and the wicked. That's one side. But the other side of the fence, we see that the day of the Lord will not only be an awful experience, but an awesome experience found in verse 2 and verse 3. It says that those who fear the name of God will experience, first of all, divine health in verse 2. The Son of Righteousness shall arise, it says, with healing in his wings. And then, divine strength in verse 3. It says, you shall trample the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet. On that day I do this, says the Lord of hosts. So a day of the divine health and a day of divine strength, all resonating as an awesome experience. An awesome experience so those were our two main points last week as we focused on the day of the lord from verse 1 through to verse 3 tonight whatever time you are viewing this broadcast really we now move to look at the message of malachi part 19 Part 19. And in so doing, tonight we are focusing on verse 4 and verse 5 of Malachi chapter 4. Malachi 4, verse 4 and verse 5 from the New King James Version. Remember the law of Moses, my servant which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, in these two verses, that's verse 4 and verse 5 of Malachi chapter 4, Malachi continues its focus on the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. However, the tone seems more direct and more demanding in these two verses. And in so doing, the following are noteworthy. The following are noteworthy from verse 4 and verse 5 as we continue to focus on the day of the Lord. Three things actually. Number one, the individuals mentioned. The individuals mentioned both in verse 4 and verse 5. Let me read them for us again. And you will see the individuals mentioned. Verse 4. Behold the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb 
for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. And verse 5 says, again, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now I'm sure you'd realize that the emphasis is on two persons, Moses and Elijah. These two individuals are mentioned. Now here, beginning with Moses, Moses is obviously mentioned for his representative role as the law giver in the Old Testament. Indeed, Moses was the first person given the awesome role and responsibility of presenting the laws of God, both moral and ceremonial, to the people of God. And of course, when people, when many people think of Moses, they remember the Ten Commandments. But we need to note that not only were the Ten Commandments presented to the people by him and from him, or should I say from God, but the other laws, the ceremonial laws, the ones governing the civic organization of the society, the ones governing health, the ones governing the protection of the environment, all of these come under the whole matter of the law. And Moses was given this awesome role and responsibility to present these laws to the people of God. His role was the role of a law giver. But we also have, as another individual mentioned in our text, Elijah. And here, Elijah is obviously mentioned for his representative role as the prophetic voice in the Old Testament. Yes, the prophetic voice. Now, there were many prophets in the Old Testament, including Malachi. But Elijah throughout the entire Bible, even in the New Testament, we find that, that Elijah is the one main representative of the prophetic voice. Moses of the law, Elijah of the prophets. Indeed, Elijah was the prophet who bridged the gap between the former and the latter prophets within the Old Testament era. So you had the former prophets and you also had the latter prophets, the ones that wrote the books in the Old Testament, the latter ones, many of them. Elijah bridged this gap. Elijah was the, the middleman. Elijah epitomized, symbolized the prophets of the Old Testament. And so in our text, as we focus continually on the day of the Lord, Malachi chose to highlight these two individuals in his presentation. Our second major point this evening is the instruction given. The instruction given found in verse 4. Let me read it for us again. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Now, beloved, I'd like for us to focus on one word, actually, within that one verse. And the word is remember. Remember. Now, the word remember essentially points to two main instructions in regards to the law which Moses gave. Two main instructions. The first 
that the word remember points to is don't forget it. This law that Moses gave, remember, the word remember is saying firstly, don't forget it. Don't forget the law which Moses gave. Now, I want us to note that in Malachi's time, literally hundreds of years had passed since the commandments, the laws, moral and ceremonial were written and presented to the Jews. And quite likely over that time, persons would have forgotten some of the main tenets of the law of Moses that in essence was the law of God. And now Malachi is emphasizing, stressing that they need to remember, remember the law, remember the law. And one wonders if this does not apply to us today. Remember the law. Remember the word of God. Remember that which you have been taught. It is one thing to hear good sound preaching and teaching. It's one thing to, to memorize scriptures. It's one thing to have our devotions. It's one thing to underline key passages and words. But do we remember? Do we remember? Malachi is saying, don't forget it. Don't forget it. But, but secondly, when we think of the word remember, the instruction is not only don't forget it, but perhaps even more importantly, don't forsake it. Don't forsake it. Because oftentimes the main problem is not forgetfulness, but stubbornness and faithlessness. Sometimes the problem is not that people have forgotten. The problem is that people have chosen to forget. Selective amnesia. And it justifies in many ways for them the ability for them to be stubborn, to be disobedient to God's word. What Malachi is saying, don't forget the law of God, but above all, don't forsake it. Don't forsake it. Don't be disobedient. What about us today? Do we remember things from the Bible? Do you remember what God has instructed to us time and time again? But we have been disobedient. We have forsaken God's commands and God's ways. We have been stubborn. The message is, don't forget. Don't forsake God's holy word. And so, as we continue to explore these two verses, verse 4 and verse 5 of Malachi chapter 4, we not only see the individuals mentioned, we not only see the instruction given, but finally, as our third and final main point, the information shared. Yes, the information shared. In, in, in verse 5, and I have to read it again for emphasis. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. That's information that Malachi is giving to his readers, his hearers. Behold, says the Lord, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Their information was not an information that was necessarily desired or demanded. But it was given because the Lord saw it fit to inform them that just before the day of the Lord, 
If there's anything you're looking for as a sign, before that, I will send Elijah the prophet. Now, this whole matter of the sending of Elijah as a precursor to the day of the Lord could actually be interpreted in the either of two ways. Firstly, as you perhaps would imagine, it could be interpreted literally. And secondly, it could be interpreted figuratively. Now, if taken literally, the prophet Elijah or someone else with that name would preempt the day of the Lord. That is what is meant there if you're going to take it literally. That the prophet Elijah, Elijah himself, or someone else with that name, would actually preempt the day of the Lord. And, and I, I want us to bear in mind, beloved, that there were actually those who reportedly believed that it was literally the prophet Elijah that Malachi was referring to. Because, and hear this, because technically, technically, Elijah had not died. If you remember the story, Elijah was actually uplifted, lifted up into heaven, the chariots of fire. And, and technically, he had not died a common death as mankind normally does. So there were those, there were those who believed that Elijah would, in a bodily, literal fashion, return, return to the earth. And that when Malachi mentioned this, the belief was that, yes, it was the literal Malachi, the person himself, that God would resend to this world to do whatever before the day of the Lord. So, if taken literally, that is how it would be interpreted and understood. Now, if taken figuratively, then Elijah would be a symbolic reference to something or someone else. Let me say that again. If taken figuratively, Elijah would be a symbolic reference to something or someone else. And many Bible commentators, I can tell you, are of the view that the mention of Elijah here is pointing to no other person but John the Baptist. John the Baptist. And the following verses seem to confirm and affirm such a view. And I must tell you, I also adhere to that view. I believe that. That the reference in Malachi 4 to Elijah is a symbolic reference pointing to the man known as John the Baptist. So here are some verses in the, in the New Testament that confirm and affirm this belief. The first one is Luke 1, verse 13 and verse 17. Luke chapter 1, verse 13 and verse 17. But the angel said to him, that is John the Baptist's father, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Verse 17. He will also go before him, before the Lord, capital H, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children 
and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And by the way, that section, that, that phrase, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Next week, we are going to see that that is in reference to verse 6 of Malachi chapter 4. So, that's what we find in Luke 1, 13 and verse 17. Seems convincing, doesn't it? And then John 1, verse 19 to 23. Now, this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests, and John, there is John the Baptist, by the way. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? That you may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And hear him now. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. So he's not believing that he's the embodiment of Elijah. He's not believing that he was the Messiah Christ. What he's saying is that when you read Isaiah talks about making the way of the Lord straight, preparing the way of the Lord, the path, the forerunner, he, John the Baptist, was performing that role. And Malachi used Elijah, who was himself a forerunner, to symbolize epitomize who that person was. And that person aptly described is in the person of John the Baptist. And there's one other passage I'd like to leave with us. A more fulsome passage found in Matthew 11 verse 7 to 14. Now without a shadow of a doubt this should dispel every disbelief. Matthew 11, 7 to 14. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, that's John the Baptist, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? And what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. A number of people have heard that verse, that phrase. But this is where you can find it. And then verse 13 and verse 14 to top it all. For all the prophets and the law prophesied, watch that, unto John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is, this same John is, Elijah, who is to come. This same John is the Elijah who is to come. Can I get it clearer than that? That Jesus said it himself quite clearly, quite distinctly, that this Elijah is John 
in the flesh. This is John, who is the Elijah, spoken of by the prophets. It's quite clear. And so, when we think and talk about this whole matter of preparing the way, this matter of who will precede the day of the Lord, in regards to the coming of Jesus first, John the Baptist fit the bill. John the Baptist was the one. As we wrap up our study tonight, part 19, there are two questions I'd like to leave with us to ponder and to consider. The first why are the laws of God seemingly so easily forgotten today? What do you think? Why are they so easily forgotten today? Question number two. Why are the laws of God seemingly so frequently forsaken today? Why are they so forsaken today? Why do people disobey them? Why do people disregard them? Why is that so? Please send your answers, your own questions, your comments to Malachi Message 2023. Remember now, not 2024, 2023 at gmail.com. That's M-A-L-A-C-H-I-M-E-S-S-A-G-E -S 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 -E 2023 at gmail.com. Our prayer and counseling hotline numbers are 876-220-6474 and 876-332-7474. 5, 6. You will get a response when you call. Speaking about calling, let's pray. Father in heaven, we once again call upon you. We call upon you to continue to speak to our hearts, our spirits, our minds. To summon us, O oh God, again. To not forget and to not forsake your word. Lord, help us because so often, God, we need for the memories to be rolled back. We need, oh God, for our memories to be sharpened. We need to refocus on your word. So please, Lord, do it again. To enable us to walk and to continue to walk on the straight and narrow path. Until that day, when you call us home. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for being so merciful. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. If you desire prayer and counseling, please call our prayer and counseling hotline at 876-220-6474 or send a WhatsApp message to 876-332-7956. Remember to share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube page. Continue to pray for each other. Have a blessed week in the Lord.